hey, I know you're not here to listen to me, so I'll make it quick. This video is brought to you by EV Universe. EVUniverse.com is your one-stop shop for all things related to the electric vehicle. Whether you're looking for your next new or used EV, parts and accessories for the EV you already got, or merch, we've got you covered. Enjoy. I'm looking at something kind of different and something you're probably not going to buy, a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, but this is the e-Sprinter. It's all electric. I'm Tom Volk with EV Universe, and yeah, Mercedes has an all-electric van now. The e-Sprinter is exactly what you'd expect, an electrified version of the van that gets the job done. Pretty much any job. The airport shuttle that I used to get to the press event I attended in Los Angeles, California, a Sprinter. You may never buy one, diesel or electric, but Sprinters are a part of your life. The Sprinter is the flagship of our portfolio and has been on sale in the US since 2001. Built in Charleston, South Carolina, you'll start seeing e-Sprinters doing the chores in your neighborhood soon, but probably not hearing them. For now, they're made in one body style, the high roof with a 170 inch wheelbase. If you're wondering how much your plumber or handyman paid for their e-sprinter, pricing begins at about $74,200. That includes delivery. And there is a more expensive model, typically with EVs, that means a larger battery. But in the sprinter's case, the pack is always the same, 113 kilowatt hours usable. The difference is a more powerful motor. Spending an extra $3,400 buys the 150 kilowatt motor, that's 201 horsepower. It twists out 295 pound-feet of torque, or 400 newton meters. The base unit is 100 kilowatts, or 134 horses. 240 volt level 2 charging will juice eSprinter up in around 12 hours. The standard max DC fast charge rate is 50 kilowatts, upgradable to 115. With that option, 10 to 80 percent happens in 42 minutes. Plug and charge will be supported on many of the popular charging networks. Last year, Mercedes Benz Vans demonstrated its efficiency driving from Las Vegas to the tech center in Long Beach on a single charge which corresponds to 275 miles. Recently, I tested the Kia EV9 and was very impressed with its cargo space. This, <laughs> this is 488 cubic feet, five times that of the Kia. Different flooring material can be selected. This glass bottom is not one of the options. Mercedes is showing off the powertrain here. This LFP or lithium ferrophosphate pack should be more long lasting than lithium ion cells. This chemistry eliminates the use of rare earth materials such as cobalt or nickel. Cell degradation is lower than many other batteries, ensuring durability and low maintenance requirements, ideal for light commercial vehicles. E-Sprinter is rear drive only. The architecture is effectively the same as the diesel version. What do you think, frunk or no frunk? You know, they could put a frunk in here, but this is a delivery van. Many fleets will have both diesel and the EV version. There's no learning curve for delivery drivers here. It fires up like any Sprinter, only silently. And they'll recognize the transmission selector from Mercedes cars and SUVs. Uh, hey, UPS drivers can make good money. This paddle reduces recuperation drag. This one ramps it up. Holding it enables an auto mode that adjusts the amount of drag by how close traffic ahead is. And there's navigation-based charging, select a destination, and it will even precondition the pack. Like all sprinters, there are loads of ways to configure the E. Windows, no windows, powered or manual doors. The cab can be enclosed or walk through. Interior panels can be specified. Shelving can be ordered. There's even LED lighting. My journey starts near LAX. Near as I can tell, there's an $18,000 price premium for the e-sprinter over diesel models. Considering the cost of petroleum, the EV version could level the operational outlay in a few years. Plus, no oil changes and fewer brake pad replacements, things that would also keep the van out of service. On these events, we're normally paired up with another rider. My drive partner is Marcus Bureau from autoproyecto.com. All right, Marcus, ready? I think so. Let's, Let's go, go make some deliveries. Okay. <laughs> Our task? 
to deliver 450 pounds of rocks to Newport Beach, which is around 50 miles away. The load is meant to simulate the kind of equipment and gear that contractors or pet grooming businesses might have aboard. It helps with real-world evaluation. The elephant or sprinter van in the room? Range. We're driving the upgraded 150 kilowatt unit. The estimate using the WLTP cycle is 273 miles. The estimated range is good, but that is the European testing. Mm -hmm. And that does tend to be optimistic. And there's no way that we're gonna be able to do a true range test today. We're just not driving enough. But this should be more range than people need, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. deliveries, you don't tend to drive long distances. Yeah. Unless you're out in the country. If an aircraft carrier had tires, the eSprinter's wheelbase would rival the USS Vincent's 170 inches. Compare that to a Chrysler Pacifica at 122. It's a massive van. In fact, this is my first time in a, in a, a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. And I liked it. I liked that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Okay, it's it's no Porsche Taycan, but it is a big van, right? Uh, yeah, a very big van. Not sure what I was expecting, but this is a really quiet vehicle. I would have expected it to be a lot more rumbly and and riding like a truck, mm -hmm. but it's quiet and it's comfortable. Yep. What do you think about the suspension so far? It's quite good. Yeah. If I was a delivery guy, I'd be happy in this truck. With options like the voice-activated MBUX system, alloy wheels, luxury package, and faux leather seating, I estimate this truck retails for around 78 grand. Fleet operators trying to pinch pennies might not be so generous to their drivers. Seats are comfortable, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. They're very comfortable. Yeah. Nice support, nice lateral support. Mercedes hardly has this market to itself. Amazon is already running a fleet of Rivian vans, and I saw a number of these GM Bright Drop Zevo 600s on our way to Newport Beach. So on top of being able to adjust the regeneration drag, there's an auto, and it uses the radar. Mm -hmm. It watches the car ahead and will adjust the regeneration drag exactly automatically. That is very cool. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty neat. The side mirrors are a bit small, and I'd like the optional digital rear view mirror, but this big boy is surprisingly easy to drive, and I prefer smaller vehicles. A lot of things optional. So the basic trim is, is so basic. Yeah. And, and, and I don't like that. I suppose if you're a business owner and you want to keep costs down, then you're going to want that basic truck and you're not going to put a lot of options because, you know, it might make the difference between making a profit and not making a profit. And if you're buying it for employees, what do you care? You're not driving it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. EVs like this don't need loads of range. And for many companies' needs, the 113 kilowatt hour pack will be overkill. Mercedes says it's considering different sized batteries. Again, for now, this is a rear drive vehicle. Mercedes execs say this e-sprinter is for deliveries and tradesmen. It's concentrating less on van conversions and passenger applications, believing its next generation electric platform is better suited for those. Starting 2026, all newly developed vans from Mercedes-Benz will be based on just one single innovative, modular, and also scalable architecture, which we call Van EA, short for or abbreviation for Van Electric Architecture. All future mid-size and large vans will be built on it, both commercial and private as well. In the US, Mercedes-Benz Vans is aiming to expand the portfolio by adding Van EA-based commercial vans to the lineup and, for the first time ever, offer a privately positioned space limousine with a distinct luxury positioning here in this market as well. 
even the largest drivers and passengers won't have any space issues. There's tons of room in the eSprinter's cab and even more storage cubbies and cup holders. In fact, I have never seen so many in a vehicle, but when there's this much real estate available, there are a lot of possibilities. It's quite a hike up and into the extremely comfortable chairs. They're very much appreciated. I recognize a few pieces from the Mercedes cars and SUVs that I've driven over the years, but there's nothing like cut and sewn material and dramatic ambient LED lighting that's reserved for the boss's EQS. E-Sprinter is a vehicle that few civilians will purchase, but many will be impacted by. Even the people behind the wheel typically won't be the ones buying them. This is hardly a normal kind of EV. The quiet, comfortable, and refined e-sprinter is an extra level of Mercedes goodness over the diesel version. Delivery folks everywhere will be getting an upgrade. If you're interested in an e-sprinter, you can check them out wherever Mercedes sprinters are sold. For EV Universe, I'm Tom Bull.